Toronto, so 1965, so he was still the superior of his congregation, and it was very hard for him to keep control. He was the boss, he was in charge of 5,000 priests, but in many, many places they started to follow the council or the spirit of the council. No sort of things, many, 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 many changes. So he, it was very hard for him to keep control. And in 1968, he was so much the mess in his congregation that he resigned. He said, well, I don't want to be responsible for the ruin of my congregation. I resigned. He was born in 1905, he was 63. Normally, that's about the time you go and retire, right? You right. think, okay, a deserved pension, a deserved retirement. Well, no, everything started then, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's when he founded the Society of St. Pius X, providentially, right? He was not thinking of that. He was in Rome, in a small, in a small room, in a, con in a convent in Rome, and that was it. He thought, well, what can I do? And several seminarians approached him and said, Your Excellency, my Lord, you're a bishop, you have to do something for us. Said, well, what can I do? And you have to do something, you have to start a seminary, you have to really okay. Then so he was hesitant and eventually so he started that in Switzerland. And when he started the Society of St. Pius Defense, 1969-1970, it was clear in his mind that he wanted to keep the Tridentine Mass, the Latin Mass, and not all the novels. And, so, and to start and to train seminarians the way he himself was trained more than uh, about 20 years earlier, right? right. When he uh, entered the, uh, the, 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 the seminary in the 1920s. Um, he wanted to do everything traditional. And, uh, and, uh, and so that's what he did with the Society of St. Pius. And about the same time, when the new mass was introduced, 1969-1970, you know that there were several changes. The older ones will remember that. You know, they first said, "Oh well, let's put some vernacular. Okay, well, it has to be in Bahasa. Oh, you have to stand up for communion. Oh, no, 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 need, no more of kneeling. Oh, changes, many things. Oh, the priest is facing the people, little by little. Right? The older ones will remember that. The, the, the younger ones will." That's all you know, right? Uh, you know, so much so that some of you, maybe you, you, when you heard about the Latin Mass the first time, you say, why in Latin? And in fact, the question should be, why in Bahasa? Right. Why in Dutch? Or why in English? Why in French? It was never like that. It was always in Latin for thousands of, for 1,500 years, 1,500 years at least, right? So it's right. a complete novelty to say the Mass in English, German, in Dutch, in Bahasa, complete novelty, right? right. Never, never before. Right? Of course, the priest, would, would, the priest would preach in the language of the people, in the dialect, or something like that. Yes. So, of course. But um, all right. And so, but the problem, the major problem with the new mass is not so much the language. Not so much. The fact is, the new mass is not the translation of the old mass. It's a complete new mass. That's the problem. Right? So uh, basically you have some experts, liturgical experts that met together and say, let's make a new mass. Something that never happened before. The mass was not made like that with some people sitting around the table, right? right. So never, never like that. The Mass is something that was transmitted from the time of Christ and the Apostles, right? Right. And was, there were some additions, there were some suppressions over the years, right? right? But he was harmonious. It was not only, let's sit and make a new Mass. It just never existed. Never. But that's what they did. So, they made a Mass like you make an, an in vitro baby, you know, <laughs> in the laboratory. That's like that, you know. Right. So they made a mass and said, okay, okay, what do you think about that? Okay. And they went and looked at some documents of the past. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, right, hey, let's let's use this document. Okay, oh what about this one? And they made up like like you make up something. Like you 
you know, completely new thing. First, it was not pastoral at all. You know, they say, oh, it has to be pastoral, it has to be for the need of the people. People never asked for that. Never. I was told that in Vietnam, and in Vietnam people don't speak Latin, right? Right. I was told that in Vietnam in the 1960s when they changed everything, people were so sad that Gregorian chant and Latin was taken away, probably here as well. People didn't ask for that. The problem is now in 2022, people don't know what was before, right? So it's a bit challenging to reintroduce. But right. I'm impressed because I come here and you can, I can see that there are always new, new people uh, and you know, and then you sing and all that. So it's not so difficult to relearn what we have lost, right. or what was thrown away through the window, right? It's just a matter of making a little bit of an effort and then you feel at home because this is the Catholic Church, right? So, uh, so they made a complete new mass. And they said, okay, let's use things from the past. But sometimes, yes, they took things, old, old documents from the early centuries. But what they don't say is that they made of this thing with, with a completely new spirit. And I'm not making that up, right? This is proven. They, they stated this. And in the documentary on the mass, they explained that. How, for instance, they took away very important notions of the Catholic faith, such as hell, damnation, penance. All that has been removed from the new mass. The idea of miracles. You know, for instance, just to give you an example, if you compare the, the traditional missile with the new missile and what we call the collect prayers of the saints, right? You know, you have a saint every day. They did not just translate them. It would have been so easy to do that. They worked hard to make this new missile, you know, and they cut away like a little kid who would cut in a book, you know. <laughs> they removed things that were too supernatural. When there was a mention that a saint had made miracles, ah, that's just, just stories. Put that away. When it was said that you know, we have to despise the world and worldly things in order to love heavenly things taken away. Ah, that's old mentality. You know, you have to love the world, you have to be part of the world, you have to be open to the world. I'm not making that up. You can check by yourself, right? You can check by yourself. So, uh, things about penance taken away, right? For instance, in the... Uh, you know, the so-called uh, Eucharistic prayer, we call the canon, you know, of uh, Hippolytus. They took away things that spoke about damnation. Why? Why? So many very important teaching of the Catholic faith was taken away. So, are there any heretical statements in the New Mass? No. But, you know, when uh, you can sin by saying something wrong and you can sin by omitting to say something that you have to say. If you are parents, right, you have children, you can sin because you don't work at, at work, you're lazy. You can sin because you're not a good, a good spouse. You can sin because you're not a, a good father or a good mother, right, by doing something wrong. Or you can sin also because you do not do what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to tell your children, do this, don't do that, right? That we call that right. omission. There are a lot of omissions in the new mass. And this is not by chance. They cut them, they remove them. Another example. Uh, in the mass, if you have, you know, if you look at, if you have a missile and you look at the feast of Corpus Christi, you know, we have yeah. it in a few weeks, right? That speaks about the Eucharist. St. Paul, speaking to the Corinthians, tells them about the Eucharist, right? But he tells them also the condition to receive the Eucharist. He says, 
well, you know, examine your conscience, because he who eats and drinks the blood of Christ unworthily drinks, eats and drinks his own condemnation. In other words, right, if you receive Holy Communion instead of mortal sin, well, you're committing a sacrilegious communion, and if you die like that, you go to hell. That's the teaching of the Catholic faith. That's what St. Paul says. You know what? This was removed from the new missal. I'm not making that up. You can check. And it's not by chance, because they are reproducing the same text, and they just cut that package. Why? So this is a great sin for those who made that mass. So to, they don't say, they, there's no statement, oh, you can receive coming in the state of mortal sin. No, no, no. But they remove the teaching of the church of St. Paul saying, you cannot receive Holy Communion unworthily. This is very serious, right? So that is why we say the new mass is dangerous for the faith. Because it has removed very important teachings of the Catholic faith. And also, it has removed a lot of things, if not in the teaching itself, in the celebration. Right. You can see immediately, you come here, the difference between a new mass and a, and a tridentine mass, right? Okay. The reverence, the respect for our Lord. What does that teach you? That, teach you? that teaches you the reality of Holy Eucharist. That shows you also the role of the priest, who's ordained by, by a bishop. Yeah. that teaches you the reality of the Mass, which is first a sacrifice before being a meal. All these changes in the Mass, and here the vernacular is important because, you know, we talk in vernacular when we have regular discussion. But the fact that Latin is used, you know there's something special. When you go to work, when you go to a restaurant, you don't speak Latin, right? right. Unless you're brilliant. <laughs> uh, university. I will tell you something. I participated to some seminars in Latin. Right? Wow. So this is very special. This yeah. is very rare, and this is a bit complicated, right? But that's very special. Then, yes, you have conferences in Latin, and you even when you eat your meal, you speak Latin, right? <laughs> but that's very special. Okay? So we're not asking every people to do that. <laughs> So when you come to church and everything is in Latin, anybody in Greek, anybody in Hebrew, because Kyrie Eleison, that's Greek, but Amen, Alleluia, Cherubim, Seraphim, that's Hebrew, right? You know that there's something special going on, right? right. You're not at work, you're not at home, you're not in a restaurant, right? You're in a, something special is happening. It's the Mass, something sacred, right? So that's why the, the Latin is important. Plus, the priest is not facing you, except when he talks to you, when he addresses you. There's also something special. If you attend just a, a conference, the, the, the person is talking to you. He's not talking to you that way, right? <laughs> so so uh, now I'm talking to you. So that, so that tells you a lot. Right. The priest is not first talking to you at Mass. He's talking to God, right? right? He's, the, he's the captain of a ship. Right? He's leading you to God. And on behalf of God, he turns to you and gives you God's grace. Dominus Bobiscum, the Lord be with you. Right? He gives you communion. He gives you the body of Christ. But the rest of the time, he's turned towards the Lord. Right? So, that is, that change, that little change, is very significant. Right? Because it shows something, that the new mass is now turned to the people. It's a show. Right? Yeah. And if it's a show, it, there must be entertainment, there must be music, there must be a microphone. The microphone, the new mass is more important than the crucifix or the Eucharist, right? It's <laughs> a big microphone, right? So it's a show, right? The priest is, is making a show, so he's not, he needs to be attractive, he needs to be everything. Not in the, in, not in the Latin mass, because who is the center of the Latin Mass Rain Mass? It's God. Yeah. It's the crucifix. It's Holy Eucharist. Right? So you can see that these changes, you've got so many, many of these many changes. Right? 
So one change could have been okay. But all these changes put together and with a clear intention of changing the mass, changing the focus of the mass, that tells you something is something wrong that happened with the mass, with the changes of the mass. And it, it tells you that the mass, unfortunately, the mass, the official mass, has become something dangerous for the faith. Well. Because someone who attends the new mass constantly, what will happen? Several things. He will lack reverence towards the Blessed Sacrament. Why? Because the priest doesn't make any genuflection, right? I remember in my parish, I was not going to my parish, thank God, because I was raised traditional. But I remember when I was a seminarian, I would go and sometimes try to pray in the church because it was quiet, because there was nobody in the church. <laughs> you know, there was other church. It was first time. But I was good. So, and this, I would see the sacristan, I would be praying, and the sacristan, you know, the one in charge of the sacristan, would come, smoking. Tabernacle there and move things. He smokes in the church, he doesn't make any genuflection. What does that mean? He doesn't believe in Holy Eucharist. So, and the priest is probably the same. Right? So, and it's, and it's not surprising. I mean, none of us have seen Jesus in Holy Eucharist, right? Because our Lord is hiding it himself. We believe because Christ said it, this is my body, this is my blood. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood shall have life everlasting. It is so clear. It's a teaching. But we need faith. But faith has to be held by the rites. R-I-T-E. Right? Ritus. Right? By, by the right of the mass. Right? So if you suppress all the marks of respect, what happens? Your faith is shaken. You know, you feel good about it, you, say, you become Protestant. Yes. Right. So, maybe the priest will not tell you, ah, this is just bread. But, if you constantly attend the new Mass, uh, that's what you will tend to think. And the Mass, and the communion is given like that, right? right. And li like, a, like a treat, and kids, they come, you know, in, in schools, and they come back and say, hey, I'm going to bigger a feast than you, right? Like a piece of cake, or they come and they so they play. They have no more reverence, right? It's given like that on the hands, right? And you know that in some country, I think here as well, especially in the past, but in the countryside, right? The left hand was considered like dirty, right? right. Yeah. So even more than in Europe, this is shocking. It's already so because you know. So all that is un unbelievable what they did. Right? Right. If you change something, it's got to be to, to be something good and normally even better, right? right? Why do you change your car? Why do you change your house? Why do you change your job? Not just oh it's exactly the same, because the fact of changing is a pain, right? To change your house is a pain, you have to move everything, change your car, etc. You change it because you want something better, because the car is now old. Because your house, well, maybe it's very noisy because you got a little more money, you'll be able to buy something in a better place. You change your job because of circumstances, etc. So wow. when you change something, St. Thomas Aquinas says, because there is some pain in changing, it has to be better. How come they change the mass for the better to the worse? Wow. So, I'm not saying that every new mass is invalid. I am not saying that. But I'm saying that most of the time, the new mass is dangerous to the faith. Not just one new mass. There's a, there's a funeral, someone in your family or a wedding, you can attend, they say, because you have to. You don't receive communion, but you can attend politely. But someone who attends regularly loses his fervor towards the Blessed Sacrament. In a new Mass, everybody teach up. Hello, hello, how are you, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, they all, it's like a hall, a meeting hall. It's impossible to be quiet, to pray, right? 
people don't make any genuflection. They don't, there's no reverence, right? Okay. And the teaching of the priest, I don't know here, but in many countries, like in the Philippines, it's political, always political, yeah. talking about things, about politics, or they just talk about environment, you know, the planet, global warming, or this and that. When is the last time in a Novo Sordo Mass that you heard the priest speak about purgatory or hell? Never. Right? So, this is a great sin, because it's a very important teaching. Christ, who is infinitely merciful, who loved us so much, so much, who died for all of us to go to heaven, spoke many times about hell. Our Lady, who's a good mother, scared the children of Fatima and showed them hell. Why? Because it's important to know that, to be sure that we don't go to hell. So it's not something bad, it's something good to talk about that, just like if you, if you have a, a son, a daughter, who starts driving, you say, hey, be careful, especially if you're in Jakarta, because driving is crazy. <laughs> so you say, you be careful because you've got crazy drivers, you don't want to have a car accident, right? Yeah. So you scare your child to prevent him, you know, to be careful. If okay, you're on the motorbike, be careful, there are many, many accidents. You do it because you love your child, right? Wow. So the church, Christ and the church uh, uh, love us, and they say, be careful, there is a hell, right? Wow. And even purgatory is not a pleasant place, right? So, so if the priest doesn't do that, he doesn't do his job. It's very serious because of him that many people will, will go to hell because he didn't tell them the truth, right? So wow. I'm not saying judge father, father this, father that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a common thing in Novo Sordo. Because when a priest, a conservative priest, speaks about things like that, he gets in trouble with his bishop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people will complain, oh, Father, he said that. And the bishop says, hey, just try to be a little more, you know, I mean, just be more open, open-minded, you know. You're so much open-minded that you, your head is empty, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can see that you all understand English very well. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, just to say, so I know it's, it's challenging, it's complicated, right? Because we are not saying Mass here every Sunday. But yeah. Archbishop Lefebvre used to say that, you know, since the new Mass has become something dangerous for the faith, it's better to abstain. Mm. And you are not sinning, because oh. it's not your fault. You, it's not your fault if your father, the priest, gives you a, a rotten food, right, bad food. It's not your fault. You're entitled as Catholics to receive good food from the Catholic Church. But the Church now, nowadays is not giving you a good food. The Church is giving you a poisonous food, right? Yeah. So you have to abstain from that. So I'm not saying stay in bed. Right? I'm saying if you cannot, if you there's no good mass, then you stay at home and you pray. Right? You can watch the mass online. Right? Thanks to the pandemic, now you've got a lot of masses now live yeah. on, ma right, on, on the computer. So, or you say your rosary, you pray, etc. It's not your fault. You are not sinning because you deserve. There should be a Latin mass everywhere, but it's not. There's not, and you are not priest. So what can you do? Right? So you're not sinning. Right? So. Better for you to abstain from the new mass because the new mass is dangerous for your faith. So, as I said, if there are some some events you have to for because a family member dies or gets gets married, yes, then you go right and you yeah. stay there in a way politely, if you wish, right? but you do not participate. Right? And by coming here, that's how you will keep the faith. Yeah. Think of it. In many, uh, in many other, uh, other well, first during the COVID, many churches were closed, right? Yes, yeah. right? so, but you, you have kept the faith because you prayed. In Japan, for almost like 200 years, right, there were no Catholic priests. Catholic priests were kicked out, and many Catholics kept the faith because they prayed together. So I mean, thank God it's not like that. You have mass now regularly. But you know, speaking now not of Japan, but China. 
we have not been able to return to China since the pandemic. So for more than two years now, two and a half years, they've been without the mask, sadly. Right? So, but you know, I mean, they, they try, they pray, they etc. Moreover, it's a communist country. So, you know, when you don't have the, the, the mask, stay at home, pray, or if the if the, your church is open in the afternoon then there's nothing going on, you can go and if, it's, if the church looks like a church, right? Sometimes it's ugly. You know? But if, mm -hmm. if the church looks something like pious and helps you to pray, you know, then you can go in the afternoon when there's no mass going on and then you pray and you, and you or you stay at home and you pray. That's how you will keep the faith. That's how you will pass it to your to your, your children, right? Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm shaking. <laughs> 26 minutes and 37 37 less than half an hour do you have questions well for me do you think that the perspective of many from Italy do you understand the fact is it different to the new mass of course so is the uh, 